Coming down the aisle, it's Wrestlepedia with your host, the savant of the squared circle, the Ray Man of Wrestling. It's Brody, the insane brain Herman. Welcome back to Wrestlepedia with Brody, the insane brain Herman, the savant of the squared circle, the Rain Man of Wrestling. How are you doing today, Brody? I'm doing great. Brody, we've been having a great time with this new podcast, starting off with just some classic ranking style episodes. Uh, just so people know a little bit about you, you have, you're 18 currently. Yeah. You have been studying and enjoying professional wrestling since you were in diapers. Yeah. And I don't know if, if when I say you're a savant, you're an actual savant. Yes, that, that's not a joke. You were a person who uh, took a su superior interest in wrestling. Yeah. And you have both a photographic memory and an audiographic memory. Yeah. If you've seen it, if you've heard it, you remember it. Yep. Uh, well, this is fascinating, and I'm sure our listeners and viewers uh, will get a kick out of this. Uh, so for this first season of podcast episodes... We are focusing on, on ranking episodes, but we do have great visions of going well beyond that of course. when we drop a second yes. season. And uh, we are going to drop the first season all at once. Yeah. Uh, because I know how hungry people get when they yeah. want to have stuff ranked. On yeah. today's episode, this might be my favorite topic. I, of course, am the dad. Yeah. I am not the wrestling expert that you are. No. But I know just enough of it to ask the right questions. Yeah. On today's episode, we are going to feature the top five heel turns yeah. of all time. So just so the audience understands, these are situations where a good guy turns into a bad guy. Yes. And, and you know, it, often it's it's a shocking thing. It is. It's, it's a shock. I, I find that emotionally, it's one of the most fascinating things to watch. Yeah. When a person who came into the ring being cheered... Yeah. Does something so drastically, yeah, that they can get the entire crowd to turn against us. Yes. Not since Ivan Drago, who came into the ring in Rocky IV, getting cheers, and by the end of the of the match, he was the heel. He was the villain. Yeah. But that's boxing and that's movies. Let's talk professional real wrestling. life. I mean, obviously, there's stuff for difference between cinematic emotion and real life emotion and we'll talk about yeah, that That's although they the do overlap quite a bit right because they, they are it's almost as if you're watching yeah. a, a stage play and they're and they're getting you to to just shift which is an amazing thing yeah. to get people to shift emotions Let, let's not true. delay any further no everybody wants to hear number five on your list tell us who it is and set it up for us what happened well this is a a big wrestling heel turn and and, and it's Andre the Giant turns on Hulk Hogan in, in early 1987 on an episode of Piper's Pit, being accompanied by Bobby Heenan. Of course, you know, at the time, Andre the Giant, he was an attraction. He was a big wrestler. He was known in the wrestling community. But there was something that changed, and it was called his role in The Princess Bride. Andre the Giant is this huge man playing a giant called Fezzik. In the Princess Bride, I think we all know that. He, but he was a really he was well liked. In he the Princess he Bride. was he was a well liked wrestler. But of course, you know Hulk Hogan's the biggest wrestler in the world. How can we make this guy the main event of WrestleMania three in the Pontiac Silverdome with ninety three thousand people and have two big stars? One of them's got to be the good guy. One of them's got to be the bad. So guy. they had no choice. They if had they, no they choice. They were going to face Andre. each other. Andre had, they to, had be bad. to turn Andre, right. Andre and that Andre was a challenge because he was so well liked in the Princess Bride. Well, yeah, until this very moment. So, so tell us what happens on Piper's Pit. Piper's How does Pit he go Hogan. from good to bad? Um, well, Andre the Giant is coming out with Bobby Heenan, who's a heel manager, who's this weasel, and fans don't like Bobby Heenan, so they already boo. And then all of a sudden, you see Andre accompanying Bobby Heenan. To confront Hogan, because everyone knows when Bobby Heenan's out to confront Hogan, it's probably going to be his challenger for the title. Andre comes out, and, and, and that's when the shot comes in. And, and Andre says, I want to face you, WrestleMania 3. He points the finger at Hogan's face for the title, and he, and he pulls Hogan's shirt. He rips his cross off, and Hogan bleeds, and it's and it's and Hogan's on his knees. And, and Hogan's got this shocking look when he sees this big mammoth giant standing right behind him, and, and Roddy Piper's just there, you know, kind of in the background. He's kind of the... You know, not not even really a part of this whole turn. But when Andre rips the cross on Hogan and causes him to bleed, and all of a sudden he's he's down there and he has this expression, it's what everyone's thinking. It's 
how can this guy be aligned with this weasel manager going up against Hogan? It's the so, match we so thought we would us, ever see. Exactly, but take us... It's the match we didn't think we'd ever see, but we all kind of wanted it. Yes, see. we all kind of so wanted it. So take us back to WrestleMania three into the match itself. Yes, we will Now they're going head-to-head. Head. I'm assuming it was the main event. Uh, I was. It was the main event WrestleMania three. And what happens in that match? Uh, well, obviously, Vince knew, knows later on in February 1988... Andre the Giant does win the belt in February 1988 and dethrones Hogan. But on, not on WrestleMania Not on WrestleMania 3. Vince believed that Hogan had to beat Andre first, so Andre would be the underdog and they would be able to have him win the title to have that be a shocking win on NBC. So obviously Hogan has to go over here, which, you know, you kind of mix that, you know, you know, you kind of want to see, you know, Hogan, you know, yeah, you know, Hogan's going to win. So you kind of, you know, know the end. Now, is that, is that the first match where, where Andre the Giant got body slammed? No, that is not. That is when a popular it? wrestling myth and we'll have a whole thing on WrestleMania myth, wrestling okay, myths, but so that you, is not a wrestling myth. Um, well, that is, so Andre, you're saying it is a myth. He no, was body slammed before that? He was. He was body slammed by Harley Race in 1978 and he was body slammed by a variety of different wrestlers. That was not the first time Ho Hogan was definitely not the first to body slam Andre. Okay, that actually, see, this is why we're doing this podcast. We got to clear up the myths. The myths separate of fact from fiction. fiction, and that is fiction. So okay, so Andre the Giant loses the match in WrestleMania yeah. three, and when he has the rematch in eighty eight, yeah, is is the crowd behind Andre the Giant at that point? No, it's it's behind Hogan. They're still behind of course, Hogan because of course in that match, as you've seen Hogan, they they, they it's the weird two referees with Dave Hebner and Earl Hebner, and and we have two referees and and and. We don't know what happened here, and, and all of a sudden, you know, we think Hogan really kicked out of two, but the, the, the count was fast, and Andre got him, and, you know, some screwy finish to really have Andre win, so definitely they were so, more behind So there Hogan. was a feeling at the end that he, he hadn't really won it fair and square. Yeah, yeah, but the, that's all heels who win championships. That's what you want in professional wrestling, so that's why it's a perfect heel-like atmosphere. Okay, well, let's move on to number four on the list. That was a pretty big one to start at number five. Who do you have at number four? Shawn Michaels turns on Marty Jannetty, and why this is a big heel turn is the unexpectedness of it, and, you know, it's just it, it catapulted one guy, and one guy kind of fell into the depths, and it was, you know... The Rockers were a great tag team. They wrestled in the AWA. They came into the WWE in 1988. It was Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. There's these popular wrestling debut face tag team. They're the Rockers. They're these, you know, guys with long hair and the blonde haired Shawn Michaels and the dark long hair and Marty Jannetty. This is a good team, right? Well, they go on to the Brutus Beefcakes Barbershop, who at that point was inactive in the ring due to injury. And he had a little talk show going on. And, and, and Shawn and Marty just doing a regular interview. And all of a sudden, in the, in the in this thing, tension starts to build. And Shawn does his finisher move, the super kick, switch, and music on Marty Jannetty. And the glass breaks, and Jannetty falls through the window, and the fans lose their mind. They cannot believe that Shawn Michaels would do this. Now, he was turned heel and eventually turned back into babyface to become one of the most popular wrestlers of all time. And he's a Hall of Famer. And, of course, Marty Jannetty, you know, his babyface turn didn't really work. It was kind of supposed to Is that to be... what was really happening? I always wonder, when you when you have a guy who gets popular as part of a tag team. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Vince or somebody on, on the planning side. He wants to turn. They him. recognize that one of them is really going to right. emerge, ultimately, as the, yes. as, as the big star. Well, it was going to be Sean. Right. So, so what they had to do, since they were a good team. Yeah. They either had to turn him heel, yeah, or Janetti heel, and they decided to, to turn to Sean, Sean heel because Sean was knowing all along heel. they were going to turn him. Around. Yeah, or eventually babyface longer down the road, but he had to be heel first, and this turn had to happen for Sean to really be catapulted in some type of angle. Besides, I feel team. like if I were a professional wrestler, I think I would enjoy playing the heel, yeah, more than in enjoying. In fact, most of the colorful characters. I feel like we're we're heels. Yes. Over the course of time, and we won't do the episode today, but at some point we yeah. have to rank the five greatest heels in yeah, the history of wrestling. Be. But we will do that in a later episode. Yes. Let's get back to these heel turns. So number one, uh, number five on the list was Andre the Giant turning yeah. heel. Number four was Shawn Michaels turning heel. Let's yeah. get to number three. Um, number three would be Steve Austin shaking Vince McMahon's hand at WrestleMania 17. Uh, they were building up at that time. You know, Steve Steve Austin and The Rock were two of the biggest wrestlers in the world. I mean, they'd done a match at WrestleMania 15. Steve Austin beats The Rock. But, you know, one guy had to be good and one guy had to be bad. Well, The Rock was turned babyface back in 1999. We talked about in the previous episode that turn. But now we, we need to heal it. We need, we, need this, we need this to be the main event of WrestleMania again. Somebody's got to be the bad guy. So Rock had already done it at WrestleMania 15. We need to make it Steve Austin. Steve Austin has the idea to shake Vince McMahon's hand. They're arch enemies. 
And now I got to shake his hand to get the fans to turn. And that's, you know. And that's all it took. Think about that. I think that's the amazing thing about the world of yeah. wrestling. The, you know, in the earlier instance, all it took was Andre walking in with Bobby the Brain. Right. And, and you knew that he had turned bad. Right. In this situation, the mere handshake yeah. with Vince McMahon and everybody immediately knew. Yeah. He's gone heel. It was during the match at WrestleMania 17, which made it also cool as well. And Steve Austin wins the match. And he beats The Rock, and you know he he comes out, and Vince comes out, and you would think I'm gonna stunner Vince McMahon, I'm gonna do my normal babyface thing, but then he just gives him that shake, and all of a sudden the fans exactly knew that okay, he's the he bad guy now. He had flipped, and and then Rock was the babyface now, and is this is this is so the, in a way that did become a double turn. Oh uh, no, because Rock had been a babyface. Since 1999, so it was not a double. So turn. were they both baby faces when the they were both began? baby faces began? But you kind of you, you got a feeling that Steve was angry at the Rock for taking his spotlight, and because Steve had been hurt, and the Rock had been the top baby face, and Steve didn't like that, and all of a sudden you kind of felt like, okay, somebody's got to turn. What's going to happen? That uncertainty in that drama. Somebody they tried to figure out the goal. The whole who's done it is who's the heel in the match. Sometimes they do that wrestling where who is the bad guy in the match and then you find out at the end who is the heel. Yeah. yeah. That was the point. Okay, well, let's get to number two on the list. Who do you have? Um, it would be uh, Ric Flair turning heel in 1985 and forming the Four Horsemen with other heels, Ole Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and Arn, Ander and Arn Anderson. So, and being managed by J.J. Dillon. So what happened? So um, Rick Flair, so, Rick Flair was a extremely popular. He was he a was, nature boy. He was a nature boy, though. I mean, 1983. Big flowing head of blonde hair. That's yeah. the Ric Flair I remember. Woo! Yeah. yeah he's still around. Yeah, he's you still... You can book him on Cameo. Yeah, you can. Hours. You, can book mo you can book most wrestlers on Cameo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Ric Flair, I mean, he was a popular wrestler. Flair for the gold. He was going up against Harley Race in the first Starcade, but... It, they, Rick preferred being a heel, and this was, you know, Dusty Rhodes booking at the time, and really... Needing him to turn heel. Well, Dusty Rhodes most popular babyface, and he's in a random match with the Barbarian, and this was kind of sneaky. And all of a sudden, at the end, they're in the steel cage match. So you know something big's going to happen when there's a steel cage. It's going to happen. Something That's big really is going to happen here. And here come and here come these heel. Here come these guys, and, and they're coming to attack Dusty. And all of a sudden, who's the leader? Well, here's Rick. And all of a sudden, they come attacking the cage, and they you know storyline break Dusty Rhodes' leg, and, and and they're just attacking Dusty. This is a brutal bloodbath. It's it's. It's 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 what they call now. They now call that the Rodney King angle of wrestling. But before that, it wasn't called Rodney King. It was you know just called the beatdown. But it's when a group of heel wrestlers beat a babyface so mercifully that it looks like he's died. Yes. Yeah, yeah, unmercifully. And that moment when the fans, the emotional response, when the fans jump over the guard and they're climbing the cage to save dust. This is bad. This is like a police beatdown. Of like these heel cops, they're beaten and they're beating Dusty to a level, and they just they just try to save the and guy. And then to see that Ric Flair was somehow the kingpin, right? Was a shocker. It was a shocker. Uh, they probably thought at first he was coming out to maybe help help Dusty. help Dusty, but then all of a sudden he's coming in and he's and he, the one. He's he's the ringleader. Yeah, when he takes the chair wow. and smashes it, and then they you know they all of a sudden the fans. I mean, it's like a swarm of just them climbing the cage. They, they were to, they couldn't believe what they. Had yeah, it's just so much emotion. Stunned. Yeah, stunned. I mean, the emotional response by fans there makes it what is a great heel turn, which makes it hard to believe that that's not number one. So no. now, after with without any further ado. What is number one? What is the greatest heel turn in the history of professional well, wrestling? Well, it's the third man. Who's the third man of the New World Order? We talked about them in our Babyface episode a little bit, but of course they're a heel group. And of course they have to reveal the third man, so we're going to have to die back for a second. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were Razor Ramon with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash was Diesel in the WWE. They worked in WCW before. They didn't like how they were being used. They went to the WWE and now they're coming back to WCW for revenge under a new promoter. Eric Bischoff books this invasion angle and they both come in and they, this whole idea is there's going to be a leader of our group. Who's going to be the third man. Well, at the time he's Hulk Hogan doesn't want to turn heel. This is something so out of his reach that Hogan can't grasp, but I don't want to do this. This is not something he's stroking his blue man shoe. Can't really get this idea of me turning bad, but eventually, you know, fans were growing stale of Hogan. It was going to get old. And eventually he had either had to change his character or he was going to die. And of course, if he didn't do it, it was going to be Sting, who was a popular WCW wrestler at that time. Hogan, um, it was during a match between Luger, Savage, and Sting were the babyface team. And it was going to be Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. But who's the third guy in the group? 
of course, he comes out and Mean Gene is in the ring and all of a sudden Hogan is there. And, and, and you're like, how does Hogan align himself with these three guys? But no bigger WWE guy. He was the face of the WWE for so long. Hogan, it makes perfect sense. He wants to join these guys who are so mad with the WWE now that they're trying to invade WCW and have a hostile takeover from the WWE. It makes total sense that Hogan would be a part of this new world order. And all of a sudden, Mean Gene, his expression was shocked. Since obviously, who knows if he was smartened up or not before this was going to happen. Mean Gene has this expression. This is not like any... Mean Gene was very good at what he did. Yes, Mean Gene Oakland was the greatest interviewer in wrestling history. When you think about interviewers... Mean Gene Okerlund is one of those guys, and he's a big part of Hogan's you know, career. I thought he had the most ironic nickname because he wasn't really mean. No, it wasn't. he wasn't. He was a nice guy. I think it was an, just sort of a sarcastic yeah. Mean Gene Okerlund. So the number one heel turn of all time was was Hulk Hogan joining, uh, joining world, Kevin Nash. And, and Scott uh, Hall in the New World Order going into the black and white. And that and know, who won that match? Uh, I, I think it went to no contest because Hogan came out and, and, and it was kind of this, they, and all of a sudden Mean Gene came into the ring because Mean Gene couldn't believe it. And when you associate Hogan and Mean Gene together, that's kind of where they went with that. And of course, with this heel turn, it caused WCW to be leading in the ratings for, I think, 83 weeks, legitimately 83 weeks um, over WWE's Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Nitro had a lead and had better ratings than Raw for 83 weeks because of this heel turn with Hogan in the NWO. And that is an amazing feat that no other wrestling promoter has done well, since. Well, I mean, then, then, then it had uh, an impact far greater than just on the fans. Oh, I mean, of it course. Had an impact on, on the wrestling on business. The and that's what makes the heel turn so important to this business. All right. Well, who did we leave out? I should say, who did Brody leave out? Anybody? Do you disagree with his choices? Do you disagree with his rankings? Go ahead and, and, and leave your thoughts in the comments or email them directly to Brody at Brody uh, at the insane brain dot com. That's Brody with a Y. He will answer all of those personally. If you have any ideas for topics, uh, we'll uh, we'll read through those and maybe we can we can talk on that. I'm always amazed by uh, how you could rattle off these facts, figures, dates just from like some file in your head. Uh, it's it's quite remarkable. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to subscribe, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel or to the podcast if you're listening to this rather than watching it. We are very happy to have you here. And uh, like we said earlier, we're going to release a whole season of, of, of these podcasts with the rankings, and then we're going to follow it up with a much more in-depth second season for people who really wanted to get into the weeds yeah. of professional wrestling yes. and its history. But in the meantime, yeah. we'll just thank you for being here and take care of yourself. Yeah.